What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Jordan McCabe, and this is episode one of the Jordan McCabe podcast. I know everybody's podcast is named their name and then podcast at the end. So that's subject to change. So reason I'm doing a podcast uh, is because I've kind of tried to expand, you know, my own brand, my own image and tried to build that. You hear people say it all the time, like, you know, in this day and age, it's really important that you are building your brand and constantly growing whatever it is you want to do, your passion. Um, so for me, that was trying to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and that landed me right here um and thanks to all the people at overtime and they are a gen z sports group media group that you've probably seen a lot of on instagram and youtube um and for this podcast that's exactly where you can find us instagram youtube uh, as well as apple Podcasts. you can follow along and kind of join what we want to create what i want to create is a very you know open community. Uh, We want it to grow um, into something where I listen to a Joe Rogan podcast, you know, almost daily. Pat McAfee does his thing and that's began to grow at, you know, at an exponential rate. So podcasts like that grow this community and have this kind of open door between myself and everybody who is out there listening right now. So that's our goal with this is to create something that, you know, people can enjoy listening to. Um, people can, you know, maybe learn some things. That's kind of a a sub goal for me. I don't know if that's even a word or a thing, but a sub goal for me is bring on people that I can learn things from. Uh, that's always been important for me trying to learn and, and consistently grow, uh, you know, as a person, basketball player, whatever it may be. Um, I think that's an important aspect of all this and what we're doing right here. So what you can expect from my podcast, uh, don't expect anything. Uh, this thing, this thing could go, you know, a hundred different angles, a hundred different ways, and really switch up on you uh, week to week. The goal, as I say, week to week, is a Monday podcast uh, where you can kind of start your week off with us. That day may change, the number of times may change. Um, if you know anything about college basketball, which you know I don't look like, but I am playing in right now um, for the University of West Virginia, is very. Um, rigorous. Our schedule is kind of uh, demanding for sure, um, and especially at you know the program that I play in. Some of you know about uh, Bob Huggins and everything that he's about. Um, so having him as a coach, I don't have a whole lot of free time. Um, and then having the brain that I do, the free time that I get, I generally spend trying to you know work on things that are going to help me on the court. But this is something for me to kind of break away. Uh, from that and use whatever creative bones I got in my body to to make something really cool and create a community for you guys. Uh, So like I said, don't expect anything, uh, especially early on. We're going to be growing. Uh, Hopefully that's together with all of you. We are going to have guests on the show. Um, The the team that we have working on this has has got us an app because Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, isn't necessarily the hub of everything in the United States. Uh, if we were up in New York, maybe a little bit different. But getting people here um, that you guys want to hear from, whether it's overtime people, you got Mikey Williams, you got Bronny, you got all these people, LaMelo, that they're following um, and that we've made connections with. Uh, not all of them just decide to come down to good old West Virginia. I don't know why it's a great place, but it just doesn't happen as often. So we have this app. Uh, it's an audio video app that we're going to have call-ins and different things like that because those are people that you want to hear from. Uh, but we are blessed today uh, to have a couple great people in the room. Um, everybody's great in here. Don't get offended by anything. But a couple great people from Overtime who I've talked about a little bit already. Uh, and like I said, you may know them from Instagram and all your socials. Um, but our first guest ever on the Jordan McCabe podcast is Overtime Tom. Yeah, 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 give it up. There it is. We are back, and uh, I forgot. I don't know how I could have forgot this, but on my introduction, I just said Overtime Tom. Like, that's just just any average Joe. This is, according to my notes that I have here that I didn't write, he's an Internet celebrity. Thank you. Thank you. Right, yeah. So let me reintroduce Internet celebrity icon Overtime Tom. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. No, Thank you for having great. me. That's great. 
right. I paid everybody to clap. Anyways, here we go. Well, why do you why do you have me on first? Why do I have you on first? Honestly, I'm I'm honored. No, I'm happy you're here. <laughs> you you texted me like you have been for the past like 3 years. I finally like, you know, like okay, this is overtime Tom. He comments on every single overtime post. No matter what time of night, well, that's because he's posting them. This is the man in charge of that Instagram account, that 2 million plus. 2.3. Nobody's counting. <laughs> Nobody's counting except for Tom. Uh, 2.3 million people follow this guy right here. Well, kind of. Kind of. What's your... Uh, it's it's girls that. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> is, that your, is, that, is that the lead right there? Like, hey, I so run... Usually I flip my phone over. Right. I have a girlfriend now, but when I wasn't. <laughs> so I was on a date. Just for clarification. Flip the phone over and the notifications just start flying in. Like, whoa, who are you? <laughs> that usually works. Like, oh, sorry. I thought I had these turned off. Yeah, I mm-hmm. turned them off back at like 1 million like everybody else does, <laughs> but they must have came on for some reason. All right. <laughs> Anyways, that's actually a good question. Why Why you? Why you the first guest? Well, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Overtime, somebody that I uh, got to know, because Overtime has become like this entity, this person almost, and if you would like to just claim that you are Overtime, that's fine. No, see, yeah, so there's a lot of people. You guys might recognize uh, Overtime Larry, um, more or less handsome than you. I think you mentioned something about that. We look different. they look different uh but no so a bunch of people are are in on this and uh have created something that has drawn obviously a lot of attention um so the reason that i brought you on specifically is to talk about and kind of kick off this podcast in general uh because like i said earlier we're not always going to be able to have people come down here um don't always have the means to do that uh but as we grow hopefully that becomes more of a regularity uh, but for you to guys to come down here, teach me, you know, everything I need to know about pod, potting, podcasting. What? Sure. Somebody said potting before, <laughs> I think. Anyways, teach me everything I need to know and have you on kind of is a great kickoff to this podcast. So that's why you're here. Uh, we're glad you're here. I'm loving West Virginia. And Morgantown's really Morgantown's happy. Morgantown's awesome. Really good weather. You were a weekend late of homecoming weekend. So uh, we yeah, probably, bad. no, we should have timed that up a little bit better. How did you start with overtime? Give us that. Let's uh, let you just start rambling here. Tell me how you started with overtime because it's obviously grown quite a bit here in the last few years. Pretty random. I was a junior in college. My mom was like, go get an internship. So I Googled sports internship. I skipped, I skipped all the way to the 50th page on Google because I didn't think anyone on the first 49 pages would hire me. And there was a little company. It wasn't called overtime at the time, but it's the people that I now work with and applied and begged them to let me work i was just like a junior with no background in anything and haven't stopped since basically who was it that you first got in contact with so it's our two co-founders zach wiener and dan porter and then our coo ali nicholas and the four of us i've been with i've been with those three now for four years awesome so you said ali and i've met ali before um she's the co yeah who is who's at the top of overtime a lot of people want to know. Is that, is that That's a good question. Answerable? There's a lot of people that do a lot for overtime. I right. see Larry's in a lot of the videos. We got yeah. a couple other people. Chloe now does women's basketball. You got Trey who does a lot of stuff with basketball. And then, you know, we have a lot of people in the background who make it all work. It's just one big machine. It's like a basketball team. Gotcha. You know? so, okay, okay. So I, I might be wrong, but there was something about, like, the start, the founder, somebody of overtime made some list on a, a Forbes list. Is that just me making things up a while ago? Yeah, that's true. Something future. Yeah, one of our guys is uh, four, 30 under 30, I think. 40 under 40, 30 under 30. He's, yeah. I think he was on it when he was 25, Zach. What does that, that all mean? Just He's, like, at the top, basically. Like, anyone who's under 30, like, he's just one of the smartest people doing the most, most accomplished, and, uh, yeah, he's a beast. So, really, like insane and that's a guy you first came in contact with early on gotcha exactly gotcha so evolution you first met them and it wasn't even overtime at the time now we're doing a little app like a bunch of different apps working on different things and then it grew into overtime which was like we just realized that we wanted to hit these high school kids yeah that's what everyone wanted to kind of find that figure out like how can we talk to young kids yep and it was like, let's show them themselves that's when we started kind of covering high school kids i was coaching high school football and basketball at the time and uh, it was pretty awesome to just see like that. And for me, it was like I was always obsessed with like, the younger kids who were like those next stars. And right. then we get to meet kids like you, kids like Zion, kids like Lamelo, and it just took off from there, kind of. Right. So a lot of people want to know, and myself included, 
you know, you see a, an app, you know, not an app, a company like Overtime take off the way that they did and now sitting here with, you know, 2 million plus followers, like you said. Um, and it's all about brand and your image and everything like that. Whether or not people like that or are okay with it or have something to say about our generation and that being a big thing, how would you say that or what would you say you've learned from overtime in terms of building your own brand? Because there's, you know, kids out there watching right now, um, episode one of something that I'm trying to build. Yeah. What's the biggest thing for building something if they do have an idea like that? For me, it was like always about being authentic. So like when I first started, like everyone who was helping me out, everyone I was working with was like, just be yourself. Right. And like, that's all we did. It was like, I was 20 at the time and it was like, just what, what do you want to see on the internet? And that's kind of what we started publishing, what I started looking for. And that's what we kind of kept doing. Like just be as authentic as possible and be real. And I think that the athlete now like appreciates that they kind of can see through all the bullshit and like mm-hmm. figure out kind of like what's real, what do we really want to see? Mm-hmm. And I think we've done a good job of showing people we're not going to like fluff this all up and it's not all like beautiful. Like some of it's going to be ugly. We're going to show the real story and that's yeah. kind of what we've done. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, in terms of being beautiful, the first like ever interaction that I had with overtime was some dude standing like on the sideline. It might've actually been Tom. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm <laughs> playing AU in Atlanta and this dude's under the basket with his iPhone, just going like this, just waiting for something to happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean the evolution no, to now. No one even cares how it looks. Like yeah. we're, we all film on like our phones. I'm on Snapchat. We're just right. like filming each other. Like that's how it works. So like, yeah. I think it makes the younger kids just kind of appreciate it more. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's more authentic than you know having somebody walk around big crew with a boomstick and all that stuff. Yeah, it is more authentic for sure. So would you say that's kind of the mission statement of Overtime? Be authentic. Is there is there an actual mission statement? You know, somewhere in the files. That I'm you sure there's follow? something that you know. See, I'm quizzing you now because yeah, no, your no. bosses are going to be like, Tom, we told you like yeah, you know, 50 times like what the keep mission real statement is. I real low-key, real calm. Got you it. Know, like, I'm just kind of like do as I kind of feel, and they give me the freedom to do that, luckily. But yeah, uh, sure. I'm sure there are some people, for the most part, who have <laughs> a mission statement. <laughs> just not Tom. Tom just kind of goes with the flow. the flow. Yeah, no doubt. So you, you mentioned you know, just now that it's about high school athletes, um, and that's the, the spotlight is there. You know, because I left high school and then all of a sudden Tom stopped texting me. That's not true. No, I'm just kidding. He kept blowing me up. But no, seriously, I mean, the spotlight is on high school athletes for overtime. And that's obviously something that is very, I don't know, um, it grabs people's attention. Um, yeah. But is it expanding to something more? Because now you're starting to see, you know, as I follow you guys as well, you're starting to see different things, not only in the college level, you know, but the NCAA level, because your first crop of crop of kids, these overtime babies of, shoot, I don't know, who who were some of the first overtime kids? Damn. So the first kids we started covering were just New York City kids. So all the Jelly Fam kids, Isaiah right. Washington, JQ. Right. There was like a little kid, Baba, who like you probably don't know, like all these little streetball legends. Those yeah. were the first kids. And then outside of New York, it was like you, Zion, LaMelo, I think were the first three that we were like, let's... We, there's people outside of New York that we can film. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Me, Zion, and Lamelo. That's it's a good those, crew. It's a good yeah, team. Not bad. Number one pick. Number one possible. Number one pick is is Lamelo going number one? What's he? You're hoping he goes three to the Knicks. Is that the? The Knicks will be the, have the number one pick and will draft Lamelo. I'm calling it right now. And when it happens, everyone has to apologize to me because I've been saying it for four years. <clears throat> you gonna cry if that happens? I will be very excited. And you need Lamelo to Who, turn. What's that your around. team? What's that? What's your NBA team? I actually don't have an NBA team. Um, I think that's more and more common, you know, now as people start to – player-wise, you know, for me – Just care about players. Just care about, you know, players and games, and you'll hear people, I model my game after this guy or this guy or that guy. If I had to, I'm from Wisconsin, you know, born and raised kind of. Uh, <laughs> I went to Seattle for a little bit and some other places, but I would say the Bucks um, if I had, if you force me to choose. Uh but yeah, no, I just follow players a lot of the times. So let's talk about a little bit the exposure and how that's changed. Um, so you see, like, what's different between we talked about that first crop of overtime babies, and now you got Mikey Williams. Congrats, just hit a million on on Instagram. That's pretty cool. So uh, insane, fifteen million followers. Oh my goodness! I mean, how many what, you got? 
200,000 something. That's good. That's good. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm, I remember when that happened to me. But that's that's my point. (laughs) (laughs) That's my point, though. That's my point is, like, we were in that first group of outside of New York kids that you guys followed, and, you know, that was, like, almost unheard of at the time for our age to have, you know, that kind of following because of, you know, people like Overtime. You know, there's been this this kind of evolution of sports media um, and how they follow different kids. Like I said, Mikey's sitting at a million right now. Followers on Instagram at 15 years old. Bronny, uh, now... A billion followers. Yeah, he's got three point something million in like, I think a month or something of being on Instagram. It's insane. I mean, the amount of exposure and stuff like that. How, How has that changed? Do you think it's good, bad, in between? Do you not have a you know, stance on that well, because it, it's, it's nuts for me to look at a kid, you know, like Mikey doing kind of what I did in terms of my relationship with overtime and seeing like this kid's 15 years old with three mil or a million followers. Now yeah. what happens when he's, you know, 18 and killing high school basketball, where's he going to be at? What's he going to do? Is it just a constant growth? I mean, there's more and more people well, getting on social media. It makes media. sense, right? Like, you were, you had a lot of fame when you were younger. Right. And there just wasn't social media around then. But right. think of the followers you would have picked up when you were first on the Ellen Show or when you were first kind of doing stuff at a really young age. Like, they got to do that, right? right. They, right they got to get it right from the start. So he's been getting followers since he was 13, mm-hmm. playing with Bronny, playing, hanging out with LeBron, playing with all these other top kids. And they get it more than even we do. Like, they make sure that they shout each other out. They're tagging each other. And there's yeah, all these constant. kids... They, like, make sure that each other are getting more followers and more followers. So they really understand that they're starting to build something. They don't know what, where they're going to end up. They all right. have to be in the NBA. But they're building something now that will matter no matter what when they get older. So I think they just get it. And uh, they're growing up with kids that are already on their social platform. So they're already fans. So it's it's insane, though. Like I, and they're, like, they love these kids. Yeah. No, I mean, the the following that they're growing is is truly just ridiculous. Um how, what about you? Like, you have a lot of followers, obviously. Like, is there a lot of pressure on you? Like, you post something. Like, are you thinking about it? Like, how's that all work? No, I honestly suck. Like <laughs> at Instagram, I really do. Um, compared You're to my black and white for a while. Yeah, that's my that's my in season thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. super creative. I know. Like, no, no, oh, we're in the pretty. season. It's just, yeah, it's aesthetically pleasing. The brighter the better it performs. Really? Yeah. The brighter the better. So I'm just going in the complete opposite direction of where I should be. You might as well be posting like a black picture, just like a blank. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I suck. And Tom reiterated the fact that I'm not good at Instagram because I'm, I'm really – I'm not all that concerned with it. Um, I wish I was a little bit more. I wish I could – you know, I almost have to force myself to be more active, you know, on that platform because, I mean, it is it is a competition-based app. You know, everybody – measures themselves and that's part of you know the world we live in now is people are measuring themselves up against everybody else constantly so for me instagram and twitter and now youtube you know getting into it it's fun because i'm competitive but i'm not all that because i have this kind of split world of i don't want to be looked at as a youtuber that's just not my my goal at least right now um i don't know where this is all gonna go my goal since I was five years old was to be the best basketball player I could possibly be. Uh, and God's like, uh, you know, I wish you the best. So I'm going to give you five nine and super unathletic. Uh, you do your thing with that. So, I mean, that seriously, that was my goal is to, to play in the NBA. Uh, still is my goal to this day. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't think I was making it to this, you know, level of basketball. So social media gives them that opportunity to say different things and do all that. So I have to be concerned with it. Um, but not consumed with it, right. if that makes sense. Honestly, I wish somebody would just run my, hey, you run Instagram accounts, you can run mine from now on. I Sound run about good? nine accounts right now. Do you honestly? I'm, I'm on nine different accounts consistently. Is that an occupation at that point, or is it wait till double digits and then you're like no, an no, Instagram it's, page it's runner? Fun. It's fun. Is um, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, I, you look at Overtime's Instagram for one, it has 9,000 posts. Yeah. I probably posted 99% of those. Really? So... You, once you get into it, then it becomes competitive. Like, that's my thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You have to get in the gym and get shots yeah. up. Like, I have to go find videos and get them posted. You, those are your Same reps. Thing. You got 9,000 plus reps on one 10, Instagram hours. account, right? 10,000 <laughs> hours, which is another – I mean, we talked about, you know, how I got into this. Joe Rogan, great podcast that I listen to. I watch it, and we, 
you know, and then there's a there's another step down from Joe Rogan. Not step down, I shouldn't even say that, but you know, previous step for me getting into this whole podcast world was uh, Gary V. Yeah, New York guy, right? So something you know, like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, no, he. I watched all his stuff. I follow him, and you know, super motivational. Super business oriented, super entrepreneurial, and wants you know people to go chase after things. So he you know talked you know about different things and how to uh, you know stay consistent with your social media. And he talks about branding all the time. And he's made you know a stupid living at this point off of just that in general. Because there's a lot of people you know in the market for not wanting to sit in a cubicle you know from nine to five, and they want to do something. Uh, creative. They want to do something that, you know, that they're kind of uh, obsessed with themselves. And that's me with the the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. He does and goes so many different angles. You know, he'll be talking to, you know, there's obviously the Elon Musk that I don't know how, how many millions of people have watched that at this point. Uh, but then he's talking to, you know, guys in the Navy SEALs. Um, that's what I've seen. I've seen him with like Goggins. That, like, yeah, David Goggins. Yeah. yeah, I want to be that guy. If, if there's anybody who's going to motivate you, it's David Goggins, Bob Huggins, and they're like just compare. They're just tied for most motivational people or light a fire under your ass type people in the world. So I picked Bob Huggins. I didn't go the Navy SEAL route just yet. Just yet. Uh, so no, I'll but, do it if you do it. Really? Yeah. You think you'd last longer in, in SEAL training than me? I mean, I hope we would be working together on it. But, uh, I'm way too competitive for that. I'm making you ring the bell way before I me. I guarantee I will make it. You guarantee you'll make it through? Have you ever heard like these podcasts? That's my shit. Are you being serious? These I know dudes, how impossible it is. Like, these I want, dudes I are like, I broke short. my, I broke both my legs and had to finish the rest of the six days, and they still no, kicked no, me. I out. get it. Like, like I don't want to. Like obviously, it's impossible. I do think one. I think you're similar to me. Like I think both of us could figure it out. Right? We're gonna work hard. We're gonna get after it. I got your back, and you got mine. Right? Yeah, I think it's a lot. Like I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that goes. It go, and there's a lot that goes into it. I need like a couple months to train. David Goggins, just show up at Morgantown. <laughs> Me and Tom will be here. You put us through your version of Hell Week, and we'll see what happens. We'll film the that's whole thing. a different kind of Hell Week. I don't know about that one. Well, that's what he did. I mean, these dudes are different breeds. These are animals. That I'm like uh, talking about this gets me going because I do love that kind of stuff. I've always been, you know, my grandfathers were both uh, military. Um, but the whole kind of thing behind SEAL training and this, this like upper echelon of just badass dudes like that. I mean, I'm super interested in that. Uh, would love to sit here and talk with somebody that's, you know, gone through that. Um, no, Tom, not your, no. you know, commute to here wasn't the same <laughs> as hell week. So I'm not going to talk to you about that. I walked to you from New York. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, that's something that I want to, you know, do is because Joe Rogan, like I said, his scope of people that he brings in because he's just fun to sit down and talk with. Um, and he's got his own thing going. Like, that's the thing is nobody wants to sit here and, and listen to somebody who doesn't have some sort of unique experience. And when we sat down and talked on the phone, you know, um, as a group a few weeks ago, my thing was, you know, I have college basketball. That's what I'm doing. And that's a very untapped area of podcasts. I mean, there's not a lot of kids, you know, 20 to, you know, 23 talking, you know, about what they're going through on a day to day basis, but it's intriguing. It's interesting because for me, high school basketball, uh, doesn't compare like in any way shape or form to what we go through on a daily basis so what was that uh, biggest jump for you it's just like are you hijacking my podcast right now you gotta ask you some questions you know it's like you work for a media company or something (laughs) no i love it um biggest jump and you know we can get into this more and we will i'm sure uh because it's in a lot of different facets of life biggest jump from high school to college basketball for me is this is now not just something you grew up with your buddies, you know, wanting to win a state championship with and everybody had fun and you grew together um, and everybody knew kind of their role because you lived, you know, around each other and stuff like that. I knew that what my role as a leader on a high school basketball team was going to be from the time I was in like fifth, sixth grade. Now you get here and as that leader, you'll hear a lot of people say this, but as that leader, now there's... 12 13 guys that were all that guy you know what i mean so the biggest jump is to learn that this is 
you know, going to be a lot different. This isn't going to be, you know, you think you went through it when you went through high school. You think you had tough days and lifting was hard and you were tired. And then you get here um, and it's just a, a completely different level. So finding ways to push yourself harder than even the 12, 13 guys around you and everybody else at this level in the country um, in college basketball, that's the hardest thing to do. Um, you know, that's kind of something that's either in you or it's not. Uh, so that was important for me to realize early on was this is going to be probably the most difficult thing that I'm going to do in my basketball life. Now, professionally, I mean, there's different obstacles right. to get around. Uh, but the the way that we work is is absurd. So I'm um, trying to still figure out ways to learn and grow. But if I boiled it down, the hardest thing about transitioning from high school to college is mental toughness. Um, and, and that's super, super important. My dad preached it to me. Uh, that's probably why me and my dad didn't really get along, you know, when I was younger because he was he was super hard on me in, in that sense because he knew what was coming. He knew my goals and aspirations, and I love him to death because of what he, you know, did for me in that sense. But being mentally tough is what separates the good from the great at this level. Yeah. Uh, the level above it. So you can take it. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't matter. No, no, Those not at all. On you, you got it. You're fine. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's that's a, that's another level. <laughs> How's Jordan deal with Coach Huggins? It was great. It was an amazing, phenomenal, amazing player. So he just I just sit there and stay and try not to make any expression because it's kind of like we you call him Huggy Bear. <laughs> Everybody calls him Huggy Bear. He's actually like a grizzly bear. And if you encounter a grizzly bear in the woods and you piss it off, I think you're supposed to stand still. It could be with dinosaurs or something or T-Rexes. But I think you just stand No, you yell at bears, don't you? Don't yell Don't yell at this bear. I learned that. I mean, everybody knows that coming in. You don't yell back at this for sure. Everyone knows that. At this bear. But <laughs> no, seriously. Now. Don't yell at a bear. The, the mental toughness aspect that he teaches, you know, not only myself, but our entire team is something that you can take, use for the rest of your life. Um, I mean, I'm going to use it with this podcast. I know there's some kid out there sitting on his computer waiting for the first episode of the Jordan McKay podcast and be like, this sucks, period. And I'm just going to have to be mentally tough enough. It's going to be, be like, a lot meaner than that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, trust me. I, I don't want to read through some of the, the requested DMs that I have. I mean, it's just part of, you know, our world that we live in now. So that is what That'd it is. That would be a good segment. We read bad DMs. That would be a great, like the, the mean tweets thing that they read. I got some bad ones. You do personally? Yeah. You want to talk about it? I mean, when he started threatening my mom. like Oh, my goodness. Not cool. Oh, man, we but, do uh, need to do SEAL training and then just show up at their doorstep. <laughs> so, all right, we got a little sidetracked, but that's the goal of this whole thing anyways. Bring it back now to the company that you work for and obviously love, and that's what makes a company great is you got a bunch of people that love what they're doing and are passionate about it. What's what's the end goal? I know you don't know the mission statement, but what's the end goal? <laughs> <laughs> what's the end goal for OT here? The end goal for OT is just like, one, we want to give – Gen Z, like a whole platform where they feel like they can be connected to, have a community. Like it goes way past sports, right? Between merch, podcasts, yeah. doing different things with Gen Z that makes them totally feel like they have their own community and feel like they can be be a part of something. Um, and just make our make it as big as possible. There's so many different things we want to do. Obviously, the end goal, you know, we have to like make money at the end of the mm-hmm. day and get acquired by a bigger company so we can do more things and get more resources. But the end goal for me is just keep creating the most positive community in the world how big can we make it how much can we put everyone together and really just like make a dent in sports but really just on all media right when did when did that start because when you first started with not overtime whoever it it was at that time the app when did it become a monetized group when did that happen and how just i mean it took off but when do you know exactly when that happened we first started getting bigger, I think, just as we started to cover more kids, started to do more things and get past just, like, the highlights and stuff. So yeah. that's when we started to kind of realize how big it could get. I think at first there was, like, a, mm, I don't know how big this audience can be. It's high school kids. Who really knows how large it can get? Right. Then as we started to see these kids, yourself, other guys just pop up and get bigger and bigger, I think that's when we started to realize there was so much more that we could do. And honestly, I think through the Instagram, you could feel like the community, like mm-hmm. kids like really loved what we were doing and they felt yeah. like they were talking to their friends, felt like they had somewhere that they can go and like express themselves. Right. And I think that's when I started realizing that. I think that was probably like two summers ago, your senior year, 
you're going into your senior year playing AAU basketball. You were in Vegas. I think Lamelo was in Vegas. Zion was in Vegas. And we shot so many different things and got to meet so many people because we were doing everything from New York. So to go out to Vegas and meet like all these fans and start to give away some merch and meet meet all these players and realize that we were making a dent, like that's when it was really, really big. Yeah, no doubt. You know, yeah, I do. I remember that, you know, Vegas, I think. Yeah, you had to finish your overtime challenge. Do I have to finish it? No, you it? had to. That's why we came Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You were like that's missing right. a scene. Yep, yep. First ever overtime challenge. Yeah, no. Big deal. First, first ever. Yeah, I do have that claim to fame. Should put it in my bio, actually. <laughs> um, but no, it was cool. Yeah. Vegas was pretty awesome. You know, Zion and LaMelo were playing against each other. So it was like four and a half million people watching that game, and the fire marshal kicked everybody out. And then as they were walking out, they were like, hey, who's that little white kid over there he's like oh no he, he was on ellen when he was like six let's go watch him so that was that was the we kind of got the trickle down you spoken to ellen lately no she i love her oh she's great i love ellen so much with the lamello stuff yeah like it, it's a it's a lamello overload but a very reasonable and understandable overload of a guy that a lot of people love to watch so what's your say? Is that like purely you or is that like a group like, hey, we're really going to cover LaMelo? <laughs> it, it was definitely me early on. I think that everyone's kind of joined forces. But like started Tom see- started it. Tom's like, I got this great idea, guys. No, it wasn't a great LaMelo. idea. We started posting him and it was like 5X performing everything else. Like everything I do is about how many views our videos get. Right. right. Like I want to show love to everyone. Everyone like yep. do everything the right way. Yep. But at the end of the day, it's like how many views can each video get? And like LaMelo just like outperformed everyone by so much. So I started being like, we'll just see how far this can go. And like, we would push the envelope so far and it didn't matter. Like people just wanted to keep seeing him Yeah, and uh, it hasn't slowed down at all. Now it's been two, two and a half years that we've been doing it with him. And like, he just does great. So, so and he's a great guy. He's yeah. awesome. So. No, he's a cool dude for sure. Um, are you, so are you super big into insights, you know, with all that stuff, how many interactions and all that stuff? Tell me about, tell me about your job at overtime. What do you do? <laughs> Um, so I run our social right? and that kind of puts a lot together. So we have instant, we have all the platforms, of course. So I run the main Instagram account with overtime. Did you ever in a million years think that how old are you right now? 25, 25. You'd be like, for my job, I'm going to be running an Instagram no, account. Cause it was crazy. Cause I was an intern and right. we had a Twitter account and Zach, who's our co-founder was like, and we want to run NBA Twitter tonight. It was like the NBA finals. We had like maybe a thousand followers. And I was like, I have a personal Twitter. Like, sure. And I posted one or two things. I got like 11 retweets and I've been posting a social ever since. I didn't even have an Instagram. Like really? I was doing no social media oh my gosh. and yeah. then just haven't stopped ever since. I think it's like 1200 straight days I posted to our Instagram. Huh. Posted to that. So it's, uh, it's been fun. But no, I never, I was like. I'm going to play sports as long as I can. Yep. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to coach sports for as long as I can. And that's all I'm doing. So you said you were, you, you coach high school football, high school basketball. I played basketball and football in college. Then I went to bat uh, Where at? Uh, in New York. I would, Where at? Give him a shout out. John Jay high school, cross river. Then go. I went to Springfield college in mass, played basketball for a year. Gotcha. And I was like, I'm done playing. I really want to get into coaching. My dad was a coach. It's all I ever wanted to do. I actually liked coaching more than playing. Really? Like I would always do it growing up. And then I started coaching high school football and basketball while I was in college and also started my own AAU program, had three teams traveling all over the place, and then just got involved with overtime and kind of put that all to the side and found a new passion. Made a good decision. You love what you're doing right now. Yeah. It's, you know, I run the social accounts, but the whole thing with overtime is like, we have such a good team and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Uh, And everyone's just so nice. Like, it's insane. Like, it's pretty hard to meet just great people nonstop. Yeah. Everyone I work with is like my best friends. They're so awesome. They work so hard. And the coolest thing is like, everyone's working nonstop, but if one person needs help or something, everyone drops what they're doing to help that person. It's like, it's a really cool team and like a family. It's, it's insane. So do you, because I see the interaction between the overtime, the official overtime Instagram page and just any like kid, the favorite, the, the favorite comments got to be, I bet overtime won't reply to this yes. or them just talking shit about overtime in some yeah. way, shape or form, <laughs> trying to get you to shoot back at them with the overtime account. Um, you know, talk, talk to me a little bit about that and how you've kind of created and generated this, uh, cause now you see a bunch of other people doing it. Everyone does that now. It, What's, is this another Tom just brilliant light bulb <laughs> idea? Like, where'd you get that idea? What it was from? is like, 
we started applying here and there. It was myself and Allie, who I mentioned before yeah. we met. And we started applying here and there. And, like, we would mostly just keep it positive, like, yeah. doing some nice stuff here and there, give away a shirt, talk to a kid, ask how his day is going, roast him once in a while. And then Trey, who you guys see sometimes, he's, like, he started working overtime. And he got involved. And all of a sudden, he started roasting kids. And at first, I was like, yo, man, like, I don't think you should say that to, like, a young kid. And then people just loved, loved it. it. And they yeah. were dying for it. So he does most of that commenting now, and he just destroys people. And I hop in there once in a while, just, you know, give myself some clout. But he, he'll he comment and stuff, and, like, it's just so... I love that I, I think if he, of that. No, no, no. It, feel, it makes it feel more personal, right? Yeah, like, 100%. You're having a conversation with overtime. It doesn't feel like a wall. No, yeah. And that's obviously... I don't know if it's a business strategy you learned or, like you said, just kind of adapted over time. Jordan's on Instagram instead of talking to me. Yeah. I probably want to do What was thing. I saying? Uh, we were talking about people replying to the comments. Do you have an addiction <laughs> to Instagram? Because you just said, like, I wish I was on Instagram right now. Um, Would you say? I mean, you just told me you posted for 1,200 days straight. It's a competitive thing. It's right? a competitive thing. Like, Got it. I want to be the first person to post everything. I want to do the best. I want to have the best caption. I want everything to look the right way. So it's mostly competitiveness for me. That's crazy. Yeah. It, no, but this is just an example. On Overtime's Mikey Williams... This one, that video, he, uh, this is nuts. He's this is crazy. Stupid. And when someone sends you something like that, like that's the best moment. It's like we have it. We're the first people to get it out. Yeah, it's gonna go viral. Everyone's gonna watch it. Yeah, is that a big thing? Like for that's overtime, like, like you guys being the, the that's first. my life. That's a that's a media just in general. Yeah, like even before you guys, and it was just like the super big names like CNN, Fox, and all these. Like everybody wanted to have and break the story. Yeah. Now it's almost like on this microscopic scale of Mikey doing not I shouldn't say microscopic because I can't even touch the net but the dunk that he just did like that's kind of a a thing where you want your hands on that first I get that and I go nuts but do you know that do you remember some of your moments that were viral in high school you know you have a few of those not not that not that you didn't you didn't do that but I did that you guys just weren't (laughs) there at the time to film it but yeah I I a couple of them the recent one that keeps kind of you know resurfacing is the where I dribble like 500 times. There's a one three one press, and everybody's like, pass the ball. But we're dribbling out the clock. There's like 13 seconds left. I fall down, throw it behind the back pass off my knees. Do you remember the flip-flop one? Yeah, everybody thought the kid was wearing flip-flops. That was the most insane video I've ever seen. So we, Jordan, had this insane move in high school. I missed the shot. I missed the shot. I think I cut that out. I trimmed it you out. You definitely I did. Um, Big time editing skill. Uh, and... I just posted it because it was a nice move. And then all of a sudden, the comments, I didn't even notice it at first. I had no idea what happened. The kid's shoe looked like it was falling off, so it looked like right. he was wearing flip-flops. Was he, he wearing flip-flops? Nah, can he, you settle the rumor? Yeah, I can settle you the rumor. Lie. You should lie. He had flip-flops on during the crazy. game. It was nuts. People in Wisconsin wear flip-flops when they play basketball. It's crazy. God, we're fighting enough you know, <laughs> stereotypes about there's just farms and everything. Now we play basketball and flip-flops. Now, you had that one, and then you know what I was looking at today? Uh... When you won section championship and you gave your medal to a special fan, yeah, yeah, what yeah. happened with that? Ah, oh, she. Uh, so this girl um, who goes to my high school or went to my high school with me, uh, Taya. She she was like this huge fan of us and our team, and she was at every single game, uh, no matter what. And her, as well as a couple of other you know kids that I formed with, formed relationships with. Um, she had Down syndrome, just as well as. Uh, my other buddy Bryce, who I know is watching this, I, I if there's one, if we got one viewer out there, actually we'll have four or five. It'll be my crazy uncles and Bryce watching this. And for my sure. mom, my mom, watching and everything. Tom's mom. Uh, that's why I brought him on here to increase <laughs> viewership. But anyways, so Taya comes to all of our games, and you know we win uh, our sectional championship, and we're going on to state, uh, and they give us these little medals. Um, and a year prior, we got a silver one in sectionals lost, and I threw it away. My mom yelled at me and to made me go get it out of the trash. I was just trying to be the tough guy, mad and everything. But anyways, we got a gold one, and Taya came up to me, gave me the hug, just normal. And I just handed her the medal because she, you know, deserved it ten times more than I did or anybody else there because she, she was just the best. Her, Bryce, and everybody else, you know, from Kakana. Uh, shout out to the, the town that really raised me. Um, you know, everybody there is super, super supportive of everything that not only I do, but anybody that's coming out of that area. Um, and she happened to be there and there was a camera there. I think, you know, at times with this whole, 
social media world that we somewhat are consumed in is like people do things for certain reasons. Uh, I think it should, like you said, you know, your goal is to maintain this authenticity. Did I ever piss you off with something I posted about you? Is there a specific thing you're thinking of in your head right now? I don't think you ever have. No, I don't think so. I kept it pretty good with you. Ever? Yeah, ever posted about... <laughs> you didn't get... You weren't funny until way after me. Sorry. <laughs> all of a sudden, now you're just... You got all types of jokes. It could be Trey, it sounds like, at this point. Trey's, Trey's coming up with a joke generator, and you're just, you know, taking all the glory I'm of running... I'm trying to positive, especially for you, so... I appreciate welcome. that. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. But, yeah, you know, you do get on some of these guys for sure. This TikTok thing. We talked about this before the show, but what what's up with that? So now we talk about Instagram all the time. That's the you know big one at the moment. Facebook was big at one time. Instagram's kind of taken over for our generation at least. Is TikTok the next big thing? Because I can't I can't do it. Sean over there and my buddy Chase on the team as well spend like hours like huge on a TikTok road trip. Guy. Huge it's TikTok addictive. guy. Oh, it's it's really addicting. So is that the next big thing? Is yeah. that it's sick. Big it's, for overtime? It's big for us because it's again like that younger generation. It, it's a little bit younger than us. Yeah I was gonna you, say me. Yeah. Um it's like super like middle school y thirteen year old like yeah. just having fun. And it's crazy because they're not embarrassed. Like I remember when I was in middle school I was embarrassed at anything I did. Like yeah. it was on camera. Still, I'm, I'm embarrassed by I'm embarrassed some of it. Right I can't now. lie. Um, I'm embarrassed right now, and it's terrible. But uh, these kids, they'll just like, make these hilarious videos and put yeah. them out for the whole world to see, and everyone watches them. It's it's really funny. It's a different kind of voice. Like I think if you I – mean, you might not understand some of them. No, I don't. I don't know if it's just the complexity uh, or the lack thereof sometimes. But, yeah, I mean some of them are pretty funny. But, yes, it's I taking over the world. I haven't pulled the trigger on, on the TikTok We're gonna download get you, just We're going to get you on one. Alright. I'm not dancing. Emmett can I can't dance. I'll see you dancing will get a lot of views, but really. <laughs> Tom, anybody cool ever DM you? Um overtime gets a ton of DMs. You know, you got your like normal ones, the players, Lamello, you got Trey Young, Jordan McCabe, Tyler Hero types, and then uh K D, Carmelo. There's a lot of cool ones out there. But I would say the funniest one is Riff Raff. You know you know the artist Riff Raff? He's got yeah. my number. <laughs> He's got my number. number and like is that your clay? Is I don't that know your if big I time him Or if I stopped answering, but like there was a time where it was like he was pushing a new song. It had basketball in it. He wanted me to promote it. Here's your promotion. Uh, <laughs> Do we know the name of this song? It, it was, it's old at this point, but it like, is old at he this just point. Would not stop, and I was like, bro, you like he had way more followers than overtime at the time, and I was like, please stop texting me. It's a mega it, marketer, is what he is. He's just yeah, trying to bad. juice he, everything he's my for what it's favorite, got. I'd say. Yeah, that's yeah. the favorite DM right there. Is yeah. from Riff Raff. You ever think about doing your hair like he does? Sure. <laughs> Speaking of TikTok, this is the first thing. I open up TikTok and this is the first. It's just some dude. We've all done this. That's a calf. Okay. Yeah, it's a calf. It's a good video. Is it really? Yeah. It's actually funny. Don't try this at home. <laughs> what happened? What? <laughs> Don't do that at home. What? Unless you're Mitch from Overtime. What in God's name just happened? He's Jack. Leave him alone. Oh, did he cramp up? So it was painful. See, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if a lot of people are sold. Maybe I should just jump on the bandwagon here and and call it a day because TikTok is taking over the world, according to Tom. But then again, according to him, the Spurs aren't making the playoffs this year. And Dejounte Murray's on the Spurs and he's back, right? Yeah. Where's he from? Seattle. Where are you from? Tacoma. Claim Tacoma. Claims to Seattle if he needs to. He claims it all. But, yeah, no, I'm not sure about all the time stakes, but TikTok's taking over the world, and I'm probably going to get on it. And that's pretty much it, folks. We've been – they've tried to cut us off like six, seven times at this point. Like, all right, guys, shut up. Let's, let's just shut it down for the day. We're starting to get things we can't even put in this podcast. Like, let's, you guys are off, off the rails at this point. Uh, appreciate you, Tom, for making the trip down to Morgantown. Uh, it's been an absolute blast sitting here talking to you and experiencing my first hosted podcast. Uh, is this the first podcast you've ever been on? I want uh, – no. It's no, not? It's not that special. Okay. But it's – no, you know what? It's <sighs> definitely the biggest. What other podcast have you been on? I just can't. Don't plug any other. Rogan. There's only there's only one podcast. <laughs> Joe now. Rogan. And it's a Jordan McCabe podcast. This is by far That's the most. That's it. This is the first one I've ever accepted. This is the first one I've ever done in person. This is the first one you've ever done in person. Yeah. That's 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 big. Yeah. I'll take that. 
also will be in my bio at the end of this. All right, guys. Now we're going to move into our first segment and the first generated segment here at the Jordan McKay podcast. It is fan love, and it is just submitted questions from you all. So we talked about this being an open door. I don't want you to sit there and just be like, feel this disconnectedness. I want this to be a community. I think that word is super important. All right. How you guys can get involved with fan love uh, is just reaching out to me because I think that's super important. As our community begins to grow, I want to get to know you guys, uh, whoever's kind of a consistent viewer, listener, watcher, whatever you may be. Reach out to me with any questions you have. Uh, Like I said, it's a semi-unique position that I'm in, uh, being a college basketball player. Whether or not you're a you know, avid sports fan, big basketball fan, or none of the above doesn't really matter. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on my Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, any of my socials, as well as AskJordan at itsovertime.com. Submit your questions, and then every week that we post our video and post our podcast, uh, you'll have a chance for uh, a little bit of a shout out like we're going to get to here, and then an answer to that question that you have for me. So our first ever question here on the Jordan McKay podcast in fan love is from Caleb, and he is from Kansas. Big 12 country, not a huge fan of that state, but, you know, I like Caleb. I like you. It's nothing against you, Caleb. You didn't choose that. Uh, He says, yo, Jordan, it's Caleb from Kansas. Going into my junior season, I play shooting guard, but sometimes I sub in at the point. Only 5'10". Doctor says I'm probably not going to grow anymore. How do you overcome your height disadvantage, and what advice do you have for me to beat out bigger kids? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, I think people have asked me that before. It all kind of balances you know, itself out. Uh, there's things that you do really well, Caleb. There's things that we you know, all do as, as point guards in different positions. You know, that's the part of knowing your role on the team. Whatever you do well, I've always been told, like, for me, it was being able to handle the basketball, bring it up the court. And as simple as that sounds, at the college level, there's always a spot for somebody who can take it from point A to point B and initiate offense. Um, so I know that's not the most glamorous thing. You might even be calling BS on my part by saying, like, well, you know, that's not very glamorous, but you've somehow found a way to get on these things like overtime and all this stuff. Uh, but it's true. My job is very, very easy. I bring the ball to the court. I start our offense. And I try to stay out of the way of the guys that can really score the ball at this level. So for you, I'm not saying take that same approach because it's different for everybody. Um, for you as a shooting slash point guard, um, I think it's really important for you to sit down you know, with your own thoughts and realize what is my role, what do I do really well. Because for some reason, uh, you know, as the game kind of evolves, our youth basketball is obsessed with these guys and kids who can do everything. Um, and that's awesome, but that's a very, very small percentage of people. And I can already tell you, I had to figure it out at 5'10", and you at 5'10", that's not us. So figure out what you do really well, figure out how to help your team win, and let everything else kind of take care of itself. Moving on, uh, question number two, appreciate the submission from Caleb there. Uh, next question we have is from Sam uh, from McCook, Nebraska, and he wants to know who my favorite players are. Uh, Well, Sam, the biggest thing for me is that there's two parts of this whole thing. There's the entertainment value. uh, That's what, you know, gets a a company like Overtime to blow up because kids do love watching and being entertained uh, by certain players. For me, I like watching a different side of it, being obsessed with the game of basketball and everything, you know, all the the little ins and outs of, of being a point guard in specific. Steve Nash is somebody that I try to model my game after, so he becomes at the top of my list for my favorite player. But, yeah, fine players, if you're asking, you know, for that reason, like who should I model my game after, go look yourself in the mirror because that's what I did. And, you know, Tom's actually not completely off on that. It's, you know, two players and John Stockton and Steve Nash with similar heights and athletic sets um, that I can model everything that they do as, you know, the greatest in their position to, to do what they do, and that's my goal. Find those people that resemble you and go chase after what they did and do it even better. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I uh, appreciate you tuning in to episode one of the Jordan McKay podcast. Like I said, that can change as a title. Everything can change around here. Uh, we might be taking this camera on the road during the season, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching with us. Uh, I'm excited to see where this goes and how this takes off. 
uh, and watching our community kind of grow. Each week, I want to try to end with a little something, you know, for you, uh, depending on where you're at in your life, what your goals are. Uh, I think that's a very, very big thing is find out what those goals are, find out your purpose, what gets you up every day, uh, whatever motivates you. Um, and I'm going to try to give you something that maybe I can relate to myself for you to take um, into your daily life. Uh, I watched something today on Instagram. It was a short video uh, by a guy named Jocko, who I don't know if any of you know him, but uh, he's a bad dude. Uh, bad isn't good. He's just really hard. Uh, he has his own podcast that he's grown, uh, which is ridiculous. A couple thousand followers on Instagram. But anyways, Jocko's talking about um, everybody likes to tell you do what makes you happy. I wanted to try to relay this message. message. I'm kind of biting off what he did today. Uh, everybody always tells you do what makes you happy and you'll be good. And I think there's some truth to that. Uh, but there's never you know, a better time than the present to realize that we only get one shot at this whole thing. So doing what makes you happy in the moment. Uh, he said something that resonated with me because I have a sweet tooth. He's like, a piece of chocolate cake will make me happy in the moment. All right. Uh, sleeping in an extra 45 minutes a day will make me happy in the moment. But at the end of the day, I have to realize those little choices that I make are going to affect what I do and what I become in the long haul. So figure out those long term goals and then realize what discipline it takes on a daily basis, whether it's waking up at a certain time uh, like he does. And I took that from him. Uh, I get up every morning at 6 a.m. and go to the gym and try to get a workout in before the sun comes up. Uh, and that's all inspired by him. So find out what your goals are in the long term and then be disciplined enough on a daily basis to go chase after those goals. Uh, and like I said before, that's a wrap. Uh, shoot any of your questions, anything that you got from me. Um, feedback. I mean, I don't care if you're 13 and you just really hated the podcast because it's too long and Tom talked too much. Just let me know. Seriously. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts. Instagram, anywhere with overtime attached to it. I'm Jordan McCabe, and that is episode one of the Jordan McCabe podcast. Thanks for watching. Let's go! Woo! You know my vibe. It's overtime. Oh, I didn't see you there. My fault. I was just getting a little jiggy. <laughs> Check out the rest of the videos right here and subscribe. Do that for us. Come on. We growing. We do this for y'all.